the essence of who our program is, is to help individuals from around the world, usually refugees and asylum seekers, who've been brutally traumatized, treated in like the most awful, inhumane ways. And what we try to do and have done is to help these individuals to rebuild their lives. The goal of what we do here is to um, have people make peace with the, their past to be able to function well in the present and to uh, become again productive members of society to be able to live their lives better for them, for their families and for the future generations. What we all realized at the same time was that not only were these individuals that we hoped and believed needed care, not only were they in need of just all sorts of services, but they really were in need of interdisciplinary care. We're individuals from different groups, different you know, professions. We're working together, collaborating together, and really you know, tying things together in a way that is so much greater than the parts. We realized we needed to address the physical, but hand in hand with the mental health. And then the social. What's the purpose of addressing somebody's broken bones or their depression or reactions to trauma if they don't have a safe place? My perspective as a psychiatrist always came from relieving the emotional suffering of people that have gone through or medical illness or trauma. The challenge in psychiatry and in mental health in general, that most of these scars are invisible. Invisible scars are very hard to um, for people to grasp or to even understand. Often, the individuals we cared for had been very successful in their country. They had been lawyers, students, uh, health professionals. I mean, a myriad of things. We had plenty of individuals who their only crime was attending a, a peaceful um, rally. We do our best to address the physical, emotional, social needs, literally from the moment they walk into our office. We try. Then they often overcome this uh, huge uh, obstacle, asylum. It really is a matter of life or death, whether they're allowed to stay here, and we do our best to help support that, we made sure that if they were applying for asylum and they didn't have a lawyer, that we got them one. Well, there are many wonderful organizations we've worked with. One in particular, Human Rights First, uh, who provide free legal services to so many of our patients. And that legal assistance, that's a treatment in and of itself. If um, a patient is separated from their family, and they've not seen their children in four or five years, or they're worried for their well-being. Um, there's no medications that is going to fix that. And then to actually be reunited with their family. And sometimes that's like five, ten years later. And what a gift. I would say several times a month. A client in our program will have been reunited with their family and they will bring them to meet their PSOT family, which I think is just one of the you know, most uh, wonderful honors. Many of our patients have graduated through schools. They've uh, gotten very good jobs. The majority have actually um, managed their symptoms better and they found new meaning in their lives that uh, would have been impossible without the uh, treatment that they received at the program. That is wonderful. Seeing how our patients go on to rebuild their lives. What really keeps me up 
at night is thinking about the people waiting for our care. Because I know what we could do. From the moment our program began, we had a waiting list. And we really need your help. Believe me, private donations have uh, been a lifeblood to this program. There really were times we would have closed if not for the generosity of our uh, supporters. But it also teaches me each and every day of just the incredible resilience of the human spirit. It's in that um, spirit that uh, we'll keep showing up to work. I hope many of you listening to keep helping us and to help uh, the next and the next individual after that uh, who walks through our door.